meeting of the Indiana Area School District Board of Trustees. Um, Mr. Shroth can't be with us tonight and I'm vice chair, so I'm gonna conduct the meeting. So uh, could we please um, have Rob do the Pledge of the Allegiance, please. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Can we um, pull the agenda back up? Uh, Mr. Um, Cronauer, would you please do the roll call? Certainly. Uh, Barb Barker. Tammy Blank. Here. Cinda Brode. Present. Julia Tamarki Kukuro. Present. Tom Harley. Here. Mr. Kerr. Present. Mrs. Leeper. Present. Mrs. Lowry. Present. Okay. We have a quorum? Yes, we do. We have a quorum. Okay. Thank you, Jared. Um, I've done my welcome to visitors. Welcome. Board President's message there. Walter's not here tonight. Public comment. Joey, it's possible, Jared. Jared's still on? Yes. Yes, we have one person, it seems like, right at this current time, Madam Vice President, uh, Chauncey Ross. Chauncey, go ahead. Julie, he's written something in the chat room. Maybe that suffices. Okay, let me take a look here. Um, comment is that the board consider providing as early as possible in the meeting the written, <laughs> I know this is a problem, the written list of candidates to be proposed for long-term substitute elementary school teachers and the per diem salaries to be paid to each as this is not on the agenda provided in advance. This is a request on behalf of the public, the residents, parents, taxpayers, and in the name of transparency of district operations. Yes, thank you, Chauncey, we will be doing that. Anybody else for public comment? Okay, hearing none, let's get to our reports, IAEA. AFSME, SGA, and Stuco. Okay, Mr. Vukovic, uh, your superintendent's report, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. I wanna just say what a great couple of days it's been since uh, teachers have been back in the building. They're working quite diligently. Today we had some path training, some social emotional training, among other things, and they're working quite hard on getting ready for opening. And I'm excited for tomorrow, we meet with our group of teachers to talk about what synchronized learning looks like. And we're gonna start planning that framework and continue to build that out. So we're ready to meet that moment. Um, additionally, we sent an email to families uh, today about transportation. There's some information coming down the road. We're on August 28th. They're gonna get their personal information coming down the road as far as what buses uh, they'll be assigned to, et cetera. But we sent out a, a letter today, just making them aware of some of the changes we made programmatic wise. And lastly, um, we just want to remind everyone that their cooperation with regards to our plan is absolutely essential. As we talked about, we need to, uh, as a district, surrender to the mandate that we're given and follow them to the best of our ability. And our plan is fragile. The more people comply with those orders or those expectations, uh, the more likely uh, we're able to stay open and make sure our kids are in school each day. And this also applies to sports. Um, we want to make sure people understand at this point, whatever decision the board decides on sports, it's only as good as everyone following the rules in there. And at this time, we don't know what decision is going to come down as far as spectators and we'll wait till that moment comes. And when we, when we do, we'll be sure to explain that. You've done it as a board, a great job helping lead us through these, this pandemic, through these turbulent times. And tonight will be no different. And as soon as we get more information, uh, we'll be sure to communicate with our families. So that's all I have tonight, Madam Vice President. All right, thank you very much. Um, I don't think we have legal counsel tonight, do we? Nothing? No, no, Madam Vice President, we do not. 
Alrighty, so now we have no presentations. Um, do we have a motion, please, to approve the minutes of August 18th and um, for the regular board meeting and uh, 3.1 and 3.2? Uh, uh, do we have a motion for uh, August 24th? So moved. Sure. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, let's do what Walter does. If you have an objection, please say no now. Okay, otherwise I assume that the two motions have passed. Um, let's get to our board reports. Uh, Ms. Bowery, Indiana County Technology Center, please. Uh, we meet tomorrow, so I will have a report at our next meeting. Okay, very good, um, thank you. Uh, Ms. Barker, I don't believe she's here for the Aaron meeting. I don't think- Yeah, yeah. I apologize, Ms. Madam Vice President, you're right, she's absent tonight, I apologize. Okay, and I don't think they've met, so I think we're okay on that. Um, the COVID-19 subcommittee, and that would be Ms. Lowry and Ms. Broad. Do you wanna um, make a few comments, please? Um, yeah, I'm gonna let Mr. Heinrich talk about what the um, oversight team has been doing. Yes, ma'am, thank you, Mrs. Lowry. Uh, the oversight committee has been monitoring the implementation of the athletic and extracurricular health and safety plan that this board approved this summer um, since its inception. Uh, we've been making adjustments as we go, trying to make sure that we can have this opportunity safely for our children. After, in the wake of the PIAA decision on Friday to move sports forward, we met today to discuss how that affected us. Um, we have a few other meetings this week with um, Whippio meeting tomorrow, tomorrow, the football league meeting, uh, the football conference meeting Thursday. Um, but at this time, at the last board meeting, we approved sports to continue up to this board meeting. At this time, seeing no reason to take any other course of action, we are now recommending that we continue sports um, as scheduled moving forward uh, and, to, and continue to monitor and continue to uh, you know closely watch the situation with the teams and in our community. Um, with full disclosure, we have to have everyone following the rules to the letter, uh, from the coaches to the, the uh, players, the parents, the fans, everybody has to be following all of the rules in order for us to provide this opportunity. But if everyone follows the rules, we are recommending that sports continue as scheduled um, until further notice. Okay. All right. Um, anything else, Ms. Lowry or Ms. Broad? No, nope, thank you. All righty, thank okay. you. Academic and Extracurricular Committee, Mr. Harley, would you give us your uh, meeting report? I don't believe we've had a meeting since our last board meeting. Is that right, Mike? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Um, I have uh, three motions. Um, let me take them individually or together. I, t I take, um, I do 5-2. Five 5-2 two. Five two is uh, the board approves a memorandum of understanding with Ultimate Community Resource Program the behavior supports is submitted. Second. Okay, any discussion? It's been approved and seconded. Okay, hearing none, um, let's do, um, if, if you have an objection to passing this motion, please say no now. Okay, hearing none, we're gonna assume that it's passed. Tom? On five three, the board approves the revisions to the attendance behavior guidelines and discipline policy handbook as presented. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, any discussion? Yes, Madam Vice President, if you don't mind, I'd like to sure. turn the floor over to um, Dr. Minnick uh, and Mr. Johnson, and they worked on updating the plan. And I thought that we'd allow them a couple minutes to give a brief overview. What we're going to do tonight is approve it. Uh, look at your feedback, and this is always subject to change, and if we need to, we can always vet it through the Policy and Personnel Committee, spend additional time revising as needed, and always reapprove. But with that said, um, I would like your support in approving this tonight as we're getting ready for kids to arrive, and I'll turn the floor over to Dr. Minnick, Mr. Johnson, and or Mr. McElhaney to give an overview uh, of, of the handbook. Thanks, Mr. Vukovic, uh, and good evening, everybody. Uh, just to highlight a couple of the points where uh, there were some questions regarding um, some of the revisions that are recommended. Uh, I want to apologize to uh, the Policy and Personnel Committee for one edit editing error where uh, report card didn't 
quarterly distribution dates simply had not been updated yet on that draft that you received. So th those have been updated. They are in the present draft uh, of the publisher copy of the handbook. Um, I think in, in general, uh, I, I'd like to just state for the record that the handbook has always been uh, an integral part of our um, processes managing at the school level with some degree of consistency. And we're always afforded as building administrators the, uh, the latitude to choose between different options. And we seek as administrators to respond to disciplinary infractions with not only uh, a progressive approach, but uh, we also are very considerate of a restorative approach to uh, managing disciplinary uh, matters. Uh, in some cases that were brought to my attention in black and white on paper, it looks to the contrary of that statement. But when you look as, as a, whether it's a, a board member or a building principal or anybody within our community at the four levels of discipline, uh, the disciplinary options and responses are just those. They're options that are afforded building level principals uh, to, to help curtail and divert um, future behaviors from um, happening that are that are infractions. Um, things such as SAP referrals are viewed as interventions. They are not viewed as disciplinary consequences, but rather recommended considerations as part of those options when it comes to certain behaviors uh, associated with each level, and um, I did add some notes in the uh, in the uh, draft copy of, of 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 the handbook where I specifically stated that a SAP referral is viewed as an intervention, if not a restorative practice in nature. Um, we view agency referrals in the same manner. Uh, we don't view them as punitive measures, but rather the necessary type of supportive measures to help prevent or divert future uh, infractions of a specific sort from happening again. Uh, in regard to tobacco violations, this past spring um, legislation passed that made vaping uh, illegal in schools. Uh, so in, in, the, in the eyes of uh, uh, our local uh, judicial system, vaping is right there with tobacco on school grounds. So I, I actually uh, had a conversation with uh, Judge Haberl earlier today just to make sure that we were not mistaken in having a, a citation in our handbook. But something that I'd like to say, uh, the judicial system in Indiana County has always been so supportive of our schools. And uh, part of our partnership, we recommend any, any program such as the Smokeless Saturday as a way to divert future misconduct in the area of tobacco on school grounds, which includes vaping. Um, we have an unwritten agreement with um, Judge Haverhill in that when a student completes the Smokeless Saturday program, um, he, he, uh, he offers that as a diversion or an educational approach to that sort of infraction. And, and he does away with any written citation, but the citation brings it to um, a platform that raises the awareness and the seriousness and really applies um, a degree of shared responsibility in, in educating the child. And, and he, he, he said off the top of his head, probably 99% of the students that get uh, citations, tobacco citations that, that are offered that program, take it. So the citation is expunged and the, um, the student is cared for in that way. So uh, we put Smokeless Saturday also in there because it is viewed as a diversionary approach or an educational approach to future misconduct of bringing tobacco on the school grounds. And um, uh, just re reviewing my notes. Oh, and we also added um, the sharing of unauthorized audio and videotaping of students, the sharing is viewed as the same level of infraction as actually audio recording and videotaping. And I think, I can't speak for the elementaries, but I certainly know at the secondary level, that's, that's an important um, addition to, to the notes because 
the sharing has often made what's a um, unfortunate situation makes it way worse when it goes viral. So um, we made those corrections and I'm happy to uh, ask Mr. Johnson or any of the members of the committee or the board for that matter. Um, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Any questions, any further discussion for any member of the team? Well, I just want to say, I think these are wonderful improvements. And I remember when we had the presentation about the tobacco issues and I thought it was terrific. So I'm very much in support of this. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, was there anything you wanted to add? I did. I, the one other question that I know that was on the list of questions that dealt with the multiple students in the restroom stall. And that was a level two offense in our handbook. And, and I want you to know the justification for that is that um, first off, the misuse of, of school property was already a level two offense, but had it been made into a level one offense, it really wouldn't have been an issue that would have made it to me or, or the assistant principal or principal who was taking, take, um, who was looking into the situation. And a lot of times what we've had happen is there's multiple students will be in a restroom stall and they end up being vaping. But if we don't have a reason to believe that they're vaping, it's it's difficult to bring them down. If they just say no, it's not a problem. Well, by adding it to a level two disciplinary infraction, what it allows teachers to do is bring them down to me what, as the assistant principal at the high school and Mr. Edmondson or Mr. Minnick in the, in the junior high. Off. And um, in any case, it just gives me an opportunity to talk to those students in the event that they were have somebody had a wardrobe malfunction. Well, of course, we weren't, you know, we would we would accept that at what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and we would um, we would accept that for what it is, and and we would, you know I would, I would apologize to the student for wasting their time, but but in the event that I pulled the students down and it was pretty clear, it would come pretty clear pretty quickly that they were, were up to something else. Well, then I would then I would have the opportunity to follow up on that and possibly do a search of their belongings. But um, by having that in the handbook, that kind of allows us to do that. So that was the thought process. I know we had discussed that. Hold on one. Just wait one second. And um, in any case, that's why that got added. It was already, uh, the misuse of school property was already there. Just added that as an example, just so that it wasn't a surprise when, when you know, what had happened. Well, that's a great explanation. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Doug or any of the team? Any further discussion among the board? Okay, we've had a motion and we've had a second, so we can proceed to voting, I think. Uh, let's vote in the chat room, up or down, please, yes or no. Okay, Jared, I think it looks like the ayes have it, passed unanimously, I believe. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, Tom, I think it's uh, Mr. Harley. Let's move to um, 5.4, please. Okay, 5.4 is based on the recommendation of the athletics and extracurricular health and safety oversight team that all athlete, athletics and extracurricular activities be allowed to proceed as scheduled, adhering to the provisions of the AISD athletics and extracurricular health and safety plan and each individually approved plan. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, I, I do think we're gonna have some comments about this. So I'll uh, hand it over to you, Mike, to, to make any comments you'd like to make, please. Yeah, yes, thank you very much, Madam Vice President. I'm excited uh, that you're taking action on this tonight and looking at it. And I just have to take a moment to remind the public, the families, the spectators, and most important, the student athletes and the coaches, how important it is to continue their great work and following our plan. Our plan is fragile like anything else. If you look around locally, other schools have already out of breaks. We've been very, uh, fortunate not to have that right now as far as uh, any confirmed cases and we want to keep that going so number one first and foremost let's remember to run the play and the play is to make sure we follow the approved plans and make sure we're doing the social distancing following best practices and adhering to those expectations and i think the second part is what we're going to have to surrender to as a board as a group as a committee there's a lot yet to be determined as far as spectators and what that looks like whipple's meeting tomorrow we expect some information to come from them either tomorrow 
and or Wednesday, and we'll be sure to communicate, but we're going to take this one step at a time. I know there's some language we have to work out with Allegheny County as far as how they perceive the total number of people in the stadium, et cetera. So there's more work to be done. This is just the first step of many that's come, and you'll make decision you think is best, and we'll be sure to run that play. But again, I just like to use this time to reiterate the fact that we have to adhere to our guidelines and our plan uh, very stringently to make sure that we can continue to play at a safe level uh, as, as we continue to move forward in slow but cautious steps. And again, once anything else changes with regards to spectators, anything of that sort, we'll be sure to communicate because we understand and recognize the fact that that'll come to us as a mandate from the Department of Health or the Governor's Office and we'll be or WIPUL in that particular case, and we'll be sure to communicate everything in a timely manner. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, I'd like to open it up to comments from the board at this point. Um, uh, Uta, do you want to lead off? Sure. Um, I want to thank our coaches, um, the athletic director, the administration, and most importantly, our participants for doing a really good job in adhering to the plan that's been put together. Um, I think it shows the community that we can do things that are uncomfortable and that are difficult um, and keep up the good work. Okay. Very good. I'm going to go. I'd like all that because this is such an important motion. I want all the board members to have an opportunity to speak. So, Tom, do you have any, Mr. Harley, do you have any comments? Julia, the, um, this team that um, we've assembled from volunteers and board and administration coaches um, um, have done a phenomenal job of, of getting us in this position. Um, I, I can't thank them enough. Uh, they've they've um, answered the call. Um, I'm going to monitor this. Uh, they're a little more uh, um, uh, nimble than the board would be, um, being able to respond and make recommendations. I, I can't. Um, I thank all of them um, from the bottom of my heart to make this a possibility. To echo Mike, uh, Uta, and Uta, um, if we if we run with this play and we and we can we keep the safety uh, um, uh, procedures in, in place, maybe we can get through a season or two. Um, it's up to the community now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Tom. Um, Tamara? Yeah, I'd like to that I don't, oh, I'm sorry. Keep going. No, no, go ahead. I just want to thank the committee, that uh, the uh, the oversight team for a lot of meetings and hard work, uh, you know, going over this plan and over this plan and, you know, stepping in where there were, you know, mistakes or oversights and correcting those. I think our, the plan that you put together as a board is as good, if not better, than anyone else is out there. Um, and I think it's all because of the team that, that put in the long, hard hours to, to make it so. So I want to thank them all from the bottom of my heart. And yes, and your committee of, of uh, taxpayers has also worked awfully hard. This, is, this has been really tremendous. Um, Tamara, I, do you want to make your comment, please? Um, yeah, I just think, again, um, uh, that we really want our kids to be involved as, as much as possible. We recognize the social um, benefits and the physical benefits of athletics. And um, I have also heard of this, the student athletes following the rules. So that is much appreciated. That is what's going to be able to continue to let them play. So kudos to them for respecting the rules and following them and kudos to the whole team, Uda and Cinda and Greg and Rob. I know you have spent hours upon hours in our community members too. So thank you. Okay, Cinda Broad, please. Thanks, Tamara. So I'm going to say it also. Thank you to everybody, especially thank you to the coaches and Greg Lozanek and Wade McElhaney, and most of all to students, the athletes who have worked very, very hard to follow the rules that they've been given. Um, without that total cooperation and the the promise of continued cooperation, I would not be able to support having sports at all because I think that it's very um, risky. But if people are careful, we're, we're, I hope we can prove that it can be done safely. I do want to say one thing of caution, though, to the students, especially the, the athletes. Um, I know that the entire community is pulling hard for you to be able to play. and. The, the emails that we've received over the last week have been nothing but supportive of athletics and encouraging the board to support um, the students in those endeavors. 
But at this point, if competition starts, we've got to add another layer of caution to this because our Indiana athletes can be as safe as safe can be. And if they go to a school and play against a team that is not being as safe, we still run the risk of having some some backslides, having some obstacles put in our way. So just remember that it's going to take everybody being safe. And um, if the coaches can encourage coaches from other teams, if students know students from other schools, encourage everybody to follow the rules and you'll have a much better chance of completing a whole season. And I would like nothing better than that. Thank you. Well said. Um, Tammy, Miss Tammy Blank, please. I want, again, uh, thank everybody for all their hard work from the committees, the subcommittees, and the administration on getting a comprehensive plan going for our kids so they could be out and play. And I know how frustrating it is for the parents who want their kids to be able to play and enjoy all these sports and be active. And I thank them for their patience and letting us help them keep their kids as safe as possible. Excellent. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kerr. Thank you. I'll echo everybody else's comments, not to repeat them, but uh, the one thing I'll say or add is now we're into uh, implementation stage, so it's really important that everybody involved, the coaches, the, the uh, students, the parents, the grandparents, that we create a culture that someone's not afraid to raise their hand and say, hey, I saw something over here that wasn't being done right. You know, we need to change. We want to continue to, to you know, our sports, our, our extracurricular activities. Don't be afraid that, you know, uh, say that maybe you were around someone that was sick or that you are sick. So that, that's the only thing I really had to add. So I'm, I'm glad that we're moving forward with this. I think it's a very important uh, part of, of our kids' education. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. I think that's everybody except me. Is that correct? Did I not? ask somebody to okay um yeah i mean i think we obviously appreciate all this effort and it's been huge and um i too thank all of the players our athletic director the the committee all of the coaches the players the parents obviously i think that's it's it's really been hard because you can't really social distance in most of these sports so there's that added um layer of concern and we really can't predict the future um ever but in this um, atmosphere of, of the pandemic, you can't, you know, you it's hard to go out more than 24 hours. So we're going to have to be very careful about this. We can't predict whatever the scenarios will be. Uh, I think we're going to have to be very flexible, um, but we certainly have appreciated your input and we will even appreciate more your, your cooperation. And of course, you can always go to the committee if you have concerns. Uh, Mr. Heinrich is, is always available to speak to you about whatever your concerns might be, as well as the athletic director. So we have to stick together on this um, and expect anything and be patient and flexible at the same time. So that concludes my remarks. Um, Mike, I'll give you the last chance to whatever you'd like to say to wrap it up, and then we'll vote. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The last thing I'd say is just uh, thank you for everyone's hard work. You know, you've been put through a lot as a board having to make some very difficult, tough decisions. And you always place kids first. And tonight is another example of that. You're doing the best you can. And now we just need everyone's help to apply to the rules and guidelines we created. I'm proud of the work everyone did. I'm happy we're able to give kids an opportunity to, to continue their passion and be involved in uh, extracurricular activities. And what we'll do is we'll go one day at a time and continue to work uh, on implementing our plan that coaches and student athletes have done a great job so far. And we'll continue to move forward as we can. And like anything else, it's subject to change, as we know, the way of this pandemic. So uh, let's stay the course. Let's everyone work together. And thank you for everyone for their hard work and leadership. Thank you, Mr. Vukovic. OK, I think we're going to have it. Jared, could we please have a, uh, it's been moved and seconded. Could we please have a roll call vote? Tammy Blank? Yes. Cinda Brode? Yes. Julia Tamarki Kukuro? Yes. Tom Harley? Yes. Mr. Kerr? Yes. Mrs. Leeper? Yes. Mrs. Lowry? Yes. 
Motion passes seven to zero. Okay, well that's exciting. That's that's great, great. So good luck to our student athletes, and remember to study hard. It's not all fun and games. You also have to study. We want we, we want to see good grades as well. Okay, now we go on to the uh, policy and personnel committee, and that is Ms. Lowry. Um, can we move the agenda up a little bit, um, Jared? When we're done going through the motions, do you mind um, putting the information um, to fill in the blanks um, either in the chat or um, making them available? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Okay. Um, 6.2, that based on the recommendation, oh, I don't have a committee report because we haven't met um, since our, I guess, two meetings ago. Um, so 6.2, that based on the recommendation of administration, Nicola Smith be employed as elementary teacher effective August 25, 2020, in accordance with her certification and at an annual salary of $54,724, step two, instructional one, pending receipt of updated clearances and CLEAR Act 168 forms. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, I'd like to open it up for discussion. Mike, do you want to uh, start us off with any comments? No, thank you, Madam Vice President. I'll make my comments brief. I know the administration, uh, Mr. Heinrich and, and Ms. Eisenman and Ms. Savagian had a lot of great options to choose from. This is who they brought forward and I fully support their recommendation. Great, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none. Um, Let's do it um, the first way. If you have an objection to this motion, please say so now. If not, I'll assume that we've passed the motion unanimously. I've heard no objections. Okay, next, 6.3, please. 6.3, that based on the recommendation of administration, Nicole Decker be employed as assistant business manager, effective August 25, 2020, at an annual salary of $45,050, to be prorated based on the number of days worked in the 2020-2021 fiscal year. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, I'd like Jared to make a few remarks. I know this has come up on him rather suddenly. So Jared, just briefly a few remarks about um, the position and what it will entail, please. Sure, uh, this position um, the assistant business manager of the district takes care of the bulk of the accounting work, the day-to-day -day accounting. Um, the person who was prior into this position has been with the district for 12 years. So, um, so it's a great loss to the district, but she is uh, moving on um, to another position closer to family. So we are happy for her. Um, we, I can tell you that uh, Nicole will be coming into this job with experience as she currently is employed um, at the IU. So there'll be um, little transition or little training needed because she already works in school accounting. Um, but she's also coming into a position that is very well organized. The person leaving has done a remarkable job. Um, so who, as Nicole comes in, she will have abundance of information available to her as to what the job entails what needs done on a monthly, um, quarterly, and yearly basis. Um, so we are hoping for an easy transition. We have been looking for a replacement for the past almost month and a half, um, going through multiple advertising methods for this position, as well as um, interviewing at least, or, or, or interviewing 10 people out of the 20 plus applicants that we received. So we were very happy with just the level of interest that we received in this position. Um, and we are very happy to welcome Nicole uh, to Indiana. She'll be a great asset to our team. Okay, thank you. Bob. So she'll hit the ground running. Um, so we welcome her and um, appreciate uh, all the interest in the position. Any further comments? Okay, hearing none. Um, if you have an objection to this um, motion, please say so now. Okay, I'm not, if not, we'll assume it's unanimously passed. Okay, um, Ms. Lowry, can you please go to the next motion? Sure, 6.4. That based on the recommendation of administration, Scott Shirley be employed as an administrative assistant effective August 25, 2020 at an hourly rate of $13 per hour 
subject to a 90-day probation period and receipt of updated clearances and Act 168 forms be approved. Second. Okay, it's been um, moved and seconded. Any uh, uh, discussion on this motion? Okay, hearing none, if you have an objection, please say so now. If not, I will assume that it passes unanimously. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we go on to Ms. Lowry to long-term substitute assignments, please. Okay. Um, I think we probably need to do them individually. I think so, yes. Okay. Um, I think we can vote on them at once, but I think if you read them all, I mean, yep. do you want to do it? Yeah, I, I'll read them all. Okay. Um, that based on the recommendation of administration, the board employs Heather Miller, long-term substitute elementary teacher beginning August 25, 2020, and continue until approximately November 9, 2020, at a per diem rate of $319.08 be approved. That based on the recommendation of administration, the board employs Natalie Deck, long-term substitute elementary teacher beginning August 25, 2020, and continue until approximately November 9, 2020, at a per diem rate of $247.93 be approved. That based on the recommendation of administration, the board employs Angela Frontino, long-term substitute elementary teacher beginning August 25, 2020 and continue until approximately November 9, 2020 at a per diem rate of $247.93 be approved. That based on the recommendation of administration, the board employs Cindy Lee, long-term substitute elementary teacher beginning August 25, 2020, and continue until approximately November 9, 2020, at a per diem rate of $247.93 be approved. That based on the recommendation of administration, the board employs Chandler Toman, long-term substitute elementary teacher beginning August 25, 2020, and continue until approximately November 9, 2020, at a per diem rate of $247.93 be approved. And that the, based on the recommendation of administration, the board employs Carly Stefanino, long-term substitute elementary teacher, beginning August 25, 2020, and continue until approximately November 9, 2020, at a per diem rate of $247.93. And that's it. Second. There, there's one more, Mrs. Lowry, as a, a long-term sub for an art teacher for the year as well. Okay. Um, and that's due to a recent sabbatical leave. It's all part of the 6.5. That's right, all I understand. I just, I just didn't write the name down, so I'm trying to get to it real quick. It's a, Alyssa Millen. Okay. Um, that based on the recommendation of administration, the board employs Alyssa Millen as a long-term substitute elementary art teacher beginning August 25, 2020, and continue until the end of the 2020-2021 school year at a per diem rate of $247.93 be approved. Okay. okay, I think I heard Mr. Kerr second those motion, that did. entire motion. Okay. Um, well, this is this is a quite a motion, and thanks, Uta, that's a lot to read. Um, okay. I think we do need an explanation because this is to me is really very, very important. So, uh, Mr. Vukovic, do you want to lead off on why why we've come to the conclusion that um, and your team did that these this is necessary, please? Yes, thank you very much, Madam Vice President. This motion that you're voting on this evening is reflective of a decision we made last week when we decided to uh, make sure we got K to five in five days a week and while adhering to the social distancing guidelines. What this will do uh, through great cooperation with the uh, Indiana Education Association will allow us to bring these people on, on a temporary basis to make sure that we meet the uh, six feet social distancing ga guidelines so we can operate on a, on a, on a five day basis. Uh, as the board values are, are most at risk population in this particular case are youngest learners. This will allow them to come five days a week to get educated by um, qualified staff. These people have been working in our buildings as either literacy interns, uh, subs, or as student teachers, and they've been trained by our staff, and people, a lot of them are ready to hit the ground and running. Ms. Savage and Ms. Eisenman, Mr. Heinrich went through this list and found uh, people who would be a great addition to the team, and those names brought forward that I fully support. And we think it makes sense as we want to continue to move forward, not to let the learning gap 
uh, continue to grow, but we also want to do it in a safe and secure manner. And this what this what this motion allows us to do to meet the six feet social distancing guidelines. And I'm proud of the work that they've done. And it, and, and it reflects it's reflective uh, of what the board desired as well as the community. And we met that moment. And I'm proud of everyone's work, Madam Vice President. Thank you. Um, yeah, to me, this is sort of the heart of the meeting because it was very important to me. And I think obviously the rest of the board and your team that it, with the social distancing or the physical distancing logistics that we get them the case, you know, the younger students back in school every day so they don't get too far behind. So um, I'm very supportive of this and I'd like to open it up to um, other members for comments, please. Anyone? I just think the, the administrative team did a very good job of, of figuring out a way uh, in a, in a cost-effective way to get the K-5 back in the seats five days a week and, and meet all the uh, health risks and concerns. So thank you. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Vukovic, while I'm thinking of it, um, about this coming out of the general fund, uh, considering the budget, um, situation we're in, could you explain as we talk today at Finance Committee how this would be, um, how we're going to pay for this? Absolutely, Madam Vice President. We're going to pull these, uh, these these expenditures out of the general fund. What we did was we anticipated uh, a higher amount. We have now lowered it through some different additional uh, negotiation or things that went our way as far as with the closure and hybrid model that allows us to free up some resources. So there is an expenditure to this that we're projecting anywhere from 130 to 150, 160 thousand uh, dollars per quarter, and this is something we'll pull out of general fund. We also put in our general fund a reserve for something of this nature, this sort, and this falls in line with that expenditure. Jared, anything you like to add to that, sir? No. Uh like Mr. Vukovic said, we'll be pulling it out of budgetary reserve, which is in the general fund. And there is more than enough money. There's around $600,000 in there right now to cover this expense if it has to um, even go all four quarters, which we're hoping not. Yeah, I mean, it is, a, it is a, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen yet. So it's, it's hard to say, but right now we can afford this as I understand it. So, um, Anybody have any further comments? And this could change. I mean, you know, this we're putting in writing and we're going to, you know, it looks like we have a lot of support for it, but anything can happen and we just have to keep aware of that. And we have a small pot of money to try to cope with it as best we can. So anybody else have anything to say? Okay. Um, I think we should vote. In the, it's been moved and seconded. So let's vote in the chat room, please. I think that's it. Jared, I'll let you call the vote. Uh, motion passes seven to zero. Okay, great. Yeah, I think this was a really great step on our part, so I'm pleased to see this happen. And I think it's going to play long-term dividends, so it's very much worth the investment that we're making. Okay, what's up next? 6.6, um, .6, please. Sure. Um, that the following extra duty, extra pay assignment is approved as submitted. Girls Soccer Assistant Coach Senior High, $2,702. Tamara Colazzo, not an employee. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion, please? Okay, anybody who has an objection, please say so now. If not, I will. We assume that this motion has passed it, uh, passed an, unanimously. Um, Six point seven, please. That the board approves the addition of fifteen minutes of pay time to the elementary para educator scheduled workday due to the addition of fifteen minutes to the student day starting with the 2020-2021 school year. We have a second. Second. Okay, uh, Mike. Just briefly, Mr. Bukovic, could you just? tell us why this is happening briefly please 
Absolutely, Madam Vice President. As you know, the board committed an incredible amount of resources into improving our math curriculum and making sure we have time to teach math and get everything else we need to get into elementary day. So what that meant was we added additional 15 minutes to the student day to get them there a little earlier. And that means the students will need those who have one-to-one -one aids and those who may need help getting into school as well as meeting you know, any assistance in temperature check and the screening process. It makes sense to us to bring these people in additionally to make sure the kids are supported, make sure they're taken care of safely taken off the bus as well as uh, taken into the school. So it really allows us to get the time we need for our students and additional hands on deck to make sure that they're getting in a safe manner, that they're getting support they need and helping out any additional way that the building principal sees uh, needs. needs, uh, needs. It, it, the high school did this several years ago. Now that we add additional time, earlier start time to elementary, we're respectfully requesting to do the same thing here. There's a minimal cost associated with this that we think will pay large dividends as it relates to safety, security, and student supports. Okay, yes, absolutely. I appreciate what you're saying. Any further discussion? Okay, let's vote in the chat room, please. Okay, Jared, I'll let you call the vote. Motion passes seven to zero. Okay, good. That's good news too. Wonderful. Okay, six. Uh, Uta, you're you're fine. You're as bad as any. Okay, six point eight, please. Leave of absence. Right now, you're batting about three eighty. So let's go. Um, that uh, a request for a leave of absence submitted by Marquetta Pizarchik, librarian, in accordance to title to Article Ten, Section Eight of the Collective Bargaining Agreement effective the first semester of the 2020-21 school year be approved pending receipt of medical excuse. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Okay. Anyone have any comment to make, please? Okay. If not, um, and if you have an objection, please say so now. If not, the motion passes unanimously. Okay. So um, next up, buildings and grounds. Mr. Kerr, please. Sure. Thank you. Uh, there's no meeting report tonight. Uh, the meeting that was scheduled last Monday was postponed, and then its place was an academic meeting, which was more important at the time. So I'd like to make motion 7.2, the East Pike Roof Repair, that the board approves Dunkel Roofing Company to do roof repairs at East Pike Elementary with an estimated cost of $12,250. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, Terry, do you just want to give us an idea of your concern about this motion, please? It sort of came up at audit and finance. Yeah. Uh, we've discussed it at, at past meetings, and Mr. Trout, our building maintenance uh, ground supervisor, brought it to our attention that the East Pike roof is leaking uh, several places. So he did go out and solicit three uh, roof repair bid estimates, and we narrowed it down to Dunkel Roofing. And uh, we definitely want to try and get this done while the weather's still good. So we're hoping that Dunkel can fit this in to our their schedule and get it completed here in the near future. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll have a few more comments in my committee report. But um, right now, any other comments about this specific motion with Dunkel? Okay, hearing uh, none, please vote in the chat room. Okay, Jared, I think we have seven. Motion passes seven to zero. All right, sounds good. Okay, um, I guess I'm up next. Um, we did have an um, audit and finance committee meeting tonight. Um, we went over some of the details of all the motions. The most important thing that I want to communicate, though, is that uh, we really did try to grapple with this issue of deferred ma maintenance and these big lists we have from every school of everything that needs to be done, and it really totals up quickly into major dollars. Uh, but seeing the situation we're in now and the uncertainty of it moving forward, we are concerned um, 
about any further projects. We have tentatively feel that um, unless there's an emergency, and that could be that East Pike roof, we're concerned about it, um, or, or another sort of emergency, uh, we are going to sort of defer, defer maintenance for a little bit longer and not review it again, probably till this winter for next summer, um, unless it's an emergency. So we probably won't see any other motions coming up about it um, until um, after the new year. So that was tentatively agreed on. I think it's wise because this, I don't think I have to tell all the people on this call or the taxpayers that um, money's not growing on trees right now. It's hard times. And we're gonna have to be very careful and get by as best we can um, and hope that we can um, have a decent result by year end. And we should get the new, the numbers for last fiscal year um, pretty soon. So I think Jared said the auditors were coming pretty soon. So we should have, this past year wrapped up fully. And we asked Jared for a good report on that, didn't we, Jared? Yes, you didn't. And I will <laughs> hope, and I am full hope to bringing you on in another month. <laughs> All righty, okay. Um, that concludes my remarks. There's no motions tonight. So I think uh, we move next to the public comment on it. It's 814, that's pretty good. So that's about an hour, public comment on agenda items. Anything? All righty. Hearing none. In closures, we have our student activity account for the junior high. Uh, notice of the executive session. Um, I guess there was a did executive session at 6 p.m. to discuss personnel and issue, issues next board meeting will be a regular meeting on September 14th at seven o'clock to discuss general purposes, next committee meetings. You can see that listed academic committee meets at August 31st, 2020 at 530 and policy and personnel, September 14th, 2020. Okay, do I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Oh, well, that was okay. quick. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much, very much, everybody. It was a great meeting. Be sure to tell Walter. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and bragging and laughing. He'll be so pleased. <laughs> 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 <laughs>